In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Coming together as God's family with confidence, let us ask the Father's forgiveness, for He is full of gentleness and compassion. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, author of every mercy and of all goodness, who in fasting, prayer, and almsgiving have shown us a remedy for sin, look graciously on this confession of our loneliness, that we who are bowed down by our conscience may always be lifted up by your mercy. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Exodus. In those days, God delivered all these commandments. I, the Lord, am your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, that place of slavery. You shall not have other gods besides me. You shall not carve idols for yourselves in the shape of anything in the sky above or on the earth below or in the waters beneath the earth. You shall not bow down before them or worship them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, inflicting punishment for their father's wickedness on the children of those who hate me, down to the third and fourth generation, but bestowing mercy down to the thousandth generation on the children of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not leave unpunished the ones who takes his name in vain. Remember to keep holy the Sabbath day. Six days you may labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord, your God. No work may be done by either of you, your son or your daughter, or your male or female slave or your beast, or by the alien who lives with you. In six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth and the sea and all that is in them. But on the seventh day he rested, that is why the Lord has blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Honor your father and your mother that you may have a long life in the land which the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not kill. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife nor his male or female slave nor his ox or ass, nor anything else that belongs to him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm. Response is, Lord, you have the words of everlasting life. The law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. The decree of the Lord is trustworthy, giving s wisdom to the simple. Lord, you have the words of everlasting life. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The command of the Lord is clear, enlightening the eye. Lord, you have the words of everlasting life. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are true all of them just. Lord, you have the words of everlasting life. They are more precious than gold, than a heap of purest gold, sweeter also than syrup or honey from the comb. Lord, you have the words of everlasting life. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, Jews demand signs and Greeks look for wisdom. But we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to the Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those who are called, Jews and Greeks alike, 
Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than human God, and the weakness of God is stronger than human strength. The word of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him might have eternal life. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. And that I may proclaim the Holy Gospel worthily, and that you may receive it, I pray, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Since the Passover of the Jews was near, Jesus went up to Jerusalem. He found in the temple area those who sold oxen, sheep, and doves, as well as the money changers seated there. He made a whip out of cords and drove them all out of the temple area with the sheep and the oxen and spilled the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. And to those who sold doves, he said, take these out of here and stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples recall the words of scripture, zeal for your house will consume me. And at this, the Jews answered and said to him, what sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered and said to them, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. And the Jews said, this temple has been under construction for 46 years and you will raise it up in three days. But he was speaking about the temple of his body. And therefore, when he was raised from the dead, his disciples rem remembered that he had said this. And they came to believe the scripture and the word Jesus had spoken. While he was in Jerusalem for the feast of Passover, many began to believe in his name when they saw the signs he was doing. But Jesus would not trust himself to them because he knew them all and did not need anyone to testify about human nature. He himself understood it well. My brothers and my sisters, this is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to our Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning, my dear friends. We are now in the third Sunday of Lent. Is today's gospel caught you for attention? Jesus has lost his temper. He's not just angry and told the people who are making business in the temple to go away. He really mad and literally lost his temper, that he himself overturned the tables. He get a whip to drive away the animals and the money changers, and those who are selling their animals and goods. Jesus was a kind man, but this time, he cannot take it anymore that his father's house was disrespected. The temple is a sacred place of worship. People go there to pray and talk to God. It should not be a marketplace. It is okay to get mad sometimes, 
if you get mad for the right things or right reasons. Jesus wants us to be good followers that respects God. Jesus wants us to respect the holy places. It doesn't apply only when you are inside the church that you are behaving. We should respect the church and God even outside. It means at all times. My dear friends, we should remember that we do not just go to church, but we are the church. Our body is the representation of the church. So we must at all times do not do harmful or bad things against our fellow men. Jesus cleansed the temple to show his authority over the world. We should not make others' business our priority and disrespecting the church also disrespected God. Let us be worthy of respect in Jesus' eyes. Remember this, my dear friends, because just somebody asked me sometimes, Father, it is okay to get angry? My response is yes, when there is a valid reason for that anger. Anger is not bad per se when you focus your anger to the act and not to the person. Anger should not also last for a long time. It should only have a very limited life in our system of thinking so, so that it will not control us. That's why maybe since we are in this pandemic era still, there's a lot of people sometimes, they're fighting each other, they're not talking to each other. I'm advising you, just hold your temper, my dear friends in Christ. Just hold it. Be patient. Just relax. Silence is the best, most especially this Lenten season. If you know that you're, you're fighting each other, maybe the husband will go to his room and the wife will go to, his, to her garden. That's it. Just relax for a while. That's why, my dear friends in Christ, I hope and I pray this third Sunday of Lent. Let us reflect more. Let us meditate more the life of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Please all stand. As one family, let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for as men for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son is adored and glorified. He spoken through the prophet. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen. We now bring our needs and the needs of the world before our merciful Father. 
for the church may the holy spirit strengthen her in teaching god's law in spirit and truth let us pray to the lord for government leaders may god inspire their creation of policies that follow his commandments especially that of respect for human dignity and life let us pray to the lord for our catechumens and candidates that they may learn to know and believe in Christ who came to save what was lost. Let us pray to the Lord. For those suffering any type of disease or affliction, may Christ the divine physician bring them comfort and healing. Let us pray to the Lord. For those of us gathered here, may the Lord bless us in our Lenten journey. Let us pray to the Lord. For our beloved dead, may Christ who died for us welcome them to eternal life. Let us pray to the Lord. We also include in this Holy Mass the special intention of Sophia and Scarlett Soriano. We pray also for the souls of Alberto Frio, Aurora Lopez Magallon, Juan Antonio Mariquis, Cesar Canlas, and also we pray those who are celebrating their birthdays today, most especially Clarice Canlas, and those who are celebrating their wedding anniversaries. We pray also our frontliners and those who died just because of this pandemic, those who got this virus. And we pray also our brothers and sisters who are sick. Let us pray for the speedy recovery, most especially Alden Bob Jacome. And we pray also those who have cancer and those who are dying this very moment. Our brothers and sisters are suffering. Most especially they're suffering because of depression, anxiety. Those encountering a lot of problems in life, like family problems, financial problems, psychological problems. Our brothers and sisters who are already bankrupt to their business or businesses. Let us pray for them to the Lord. In the silence of our heart, let us pray for our personal intention. Merciful Father, you love the world so much that you gave us your only Son. With confident hope in your love for us, we ask you to hear these prayers through your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for your goodness we have received the bread we offer you through the earth of human hands to become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for your goodness we have received the wine we offer you from the vital work of human hands to become for us our spiritual drink. Lord God, wash my iniquity and cleanse me from all my Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God's Almighty Father. To the praise and the glory of His name, for good and the good of all His church. 
Be pleased, O Lord, with the sacrificial offerings, and grant that we who beseech pardon for our own sins may take care to forgive our neighbor. We ask this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly really right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For when he asked the Samaritan woman for water to drink, he had already created the gift of faith within her, and so ardently did he thirst for her faith that he kindled in her the fire of divine love. And so we too give you thanks, and with the angels praise your mighty deeds as we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. O Sana in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. O Sana in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the jupal, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willing to his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Robert, our Bishop, and all the clergy and their parishioners, our deacons, non-seminarians, and those who are helping our parish corpus Christi, the brothers and the sisters in every congregation our staff, our volunteers in our parish. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all. We pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints, we have pleased you throughout the ages we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you so your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. As one family all together with our humble hearts, let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us the Our Father. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation 
but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Grace we grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy. We may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. In the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to the apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And grace we grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. My dear friends in Christ, this is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof. But on this day, the word my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. As we receive the place of things yet hidden in heaven and are nourished while still on earth with the bread that comes from on high, we humbly entreat you, O Lord, that what is being brought about in us in mystery may come to true completion. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Pledge cards for the 2021 Renewing Hope Annual Catholic Appeal are available on the bulletin stands for those of you who have not yet participated and would like to be a part of this important mission of the church. Pledge cards can be returned to the parish office or placed in the collection baskets or collection boxes. We are very grateful for your generosity and support. The Knights of Columbus will be providing a takeout breakfast Next Sunday, March 14, after the 7.30 a.m. and 9 a.m. Mass. Tickets are available for purchase after Mass and are $7 each. You can also purchase tickets the day of the breakfast. Stop by their table, purchase your tickets, and help support the Knights. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you all, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Holy Mass ascended. Go and let us pray for one another. Thanks be to God.